I remembered there was a light snowfall the previous day on this particular patrol. There was nothing I had to worry about really. Every so often I'd have to come to the rescue of people that got lost. Usually it was just tourists that would come to our country and want to be out in the snow and forest and not really be prepared for it. They'd often be very cold and not well equipped for the weather. It could be especially easy to get some kind of frostbite out here. Now, it's always cold all year round, but it can be especially nasty in winter. So that was what I was expecting most of my day to be like. Now, I remembered I had the occasional urge to look over my shoulder, but I fought against it. The scenery was okay. It wasn't so great today. A lot of the snow had went a bit slushy. Water was frozen and the paths were a bit muddy too. Every so often I would see some hikers and I'd say hello to them. Often they'd get confused about where they needed to go and it was my job to redirect them into the right areas of the wilderness where they were allowed to go. Now eventually I have to get a bit further away from people because I need to go to the outskirts of where my ranger station patrols. This is where we'd get the most weird activity. Every so often we'd hear things in the night here that we couldn't pin down to a particular animal. All of the animals that we get here should be pretty scared of us, but I don't know. It seemed like you could almost guarantee that when you went here around 12 at night, you would hear a strange animal call that sounded very big. It sounded like a very large creature had to make it, so yeah, I was always cautious while being here. I eventually come up to the very perimeter of where I need to patrol and go through the gate. I'm now away from the people and the atmosphere is a lot different. Because of this being in close proximity to water, there was almost a mist covering everything. I think it's called sea drift, but I don't actually know the correct term for it. But I start making my way through the trees and I'm just having my general search. I have another buddy that's working with me and he's covering the area that I've come from so I feel pretty safe to be out here and freely roam around. All of the trees here don't have any leaves on them so it means that if you're not careful one of the branches will get you in the face or neck so I'm constantly cautious of this. I eventually make it through to a clearing and all is as it should be. I have the body of water to my right and I'm just conscious to make sure I don't get too close to it because sometimes it can be deceiving how close you are to danger. Now, I do notice something's odd. The gate that I've just come from is now open, which is pretty bizarre. I look around and I'm convinced that I closed it. In fact, I even remembered the sound of it closing. But when I've looked back, it's 100% open and I know for a fact that I haven't done it. So I think this is odd. I quickly just have a look round to make sure that nobody's actually followed me in, but there's no one whatsoever. But I try my best not to let it bother me and just think, well, it was probably just in my head and I guess the gate flung itself open again. I ended up going a little bit deeper in now. Now, I'm getting further and further away from the water, so it's getting a bit less and less misty and this makes me feel more confident. I'm now into an area that's basically only used by us. It's where we have like a large cabin shed thing, I don't know what you guys call it again, maybe what you guys refer to as a barn, but it's basically where that we keep all of our equipment that we're not using. We had some pretty cool things here too, we actually had like a little ATV, an off-road thing that we would use sometimes to rescue people, or just as like a rapid response thing, but we've got no need to use it this particular day, so I just continue up ahead like normal. Now eventually I get to the very end of where I need to patrol, and that's when I hear it, the sound. Ah oh, yes, the sound that we've grown so accustomed to, and one that I'm not actually scared of now. I call back and say, hey, are you going to show yourself today or what? I don't say it in English, but my own language, but the sound stops immediately and I kind of laugh to myself thinking, well, today I'm going to dance with this thing. Now I continue on as I do the last part of my rounds until I notice something's up ahead of me. I can see quite a tall creature standing roughly where the shoreline is of the body of water. 
It looks almost like a snowman, but more similar to a tree in terms of its exterior. This thing doesn't move an inch, and I start walking towards it confident that this is just a person that's hunting and shouldn't be here. I call out, hey, you're not supposed to be hunting here. I actually managed to jog all the way up to this thing without it moving an inch. Until then, it just takes off and heads straight towards the water. I suddenly realise that this isn't actually a hunter, and this is something different. I realise because when it's wading through into the icy waters, it isn't shuddering at all, and it literally just disappears down into the lake. Now, while doing so, I realise that there's a really bad smell around, and I can still see this thing moving underwater, and I now get the scowl of it because I've come much closer. It was probably about six and a half or seven feet tall, absolutely massive. It's actually swimming more like a fish now that it's underwater, until it stops and stares at me, and its eyes are almost glowing a yellowy orange colour. I was extremely brave and decide to sprint out of there and get all the way back to the station. I radio in what I saw, and some of the guys go out to try and investigate. They say they can't see anyone, just the tracks of somebody or something coming out of the water, getting to the exact spot that I saw this thing at, and then disappearing, but the worst part about it is, all of them think that I made up the story and that I was lying to them trying to pull a quick one on them, but I know what I saw that day. I haven't seen it since, but it's still really weird. I was travelling solo around the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State and making various stops in the Olympic National Park. I decided to stop in Quintnaw for the first time and took a random road that dead ended at a beautiful spot at the edge of the river. There was an ancient footbridge that led across the river but it looked as though it might collapse if you try and cross it so I decided against it. It was off season and I was not in a tourist area. I was the only one there. It was so unusually hot outside that I decided I needed to get into the water. I backed my car all the way to the edge of the dead end road face it out in the direction that I would need to leave. I then start hiking through the thick brush down an embankment and to the edge of the water. It was mid-fall and I didn't have a suit since I didn't plan on swimming so I took my clothes off and got in there. I had a nice swim but I could not shake the feeling that I'm being watched even though I'm in the middle of nowhere. After about five minutes the creepy feeling was enough for me to head back so I started to climb out, turned my back to the other side of the river and walked back to where my clothes and shoes are. When I turned around, there was a big tall man standing in plain sight just across from me on the other side of the river, but higher up on the embankment, and I didn't notice him at first. He's wearing a poncho made of animal pelts had long hair full of sticks and twigs and looked as though he'd been living out in the wild for a long time. We stood and stared at each other, or well, me froze in terror really, for what felt like forever when, all of a sudden, he frantically took off, on foot, to the bridge leading across the water. I grabbed my car keys, tried to grab my clothes and shoes but they got tangled up in some blackberry vines so I left everything. I went running for my life through the thick brush, black breeze, barefoot, and in my underwear, trying to make it to my car before he made it across the river. There was no doubt in my mind that he's gonna hurt me. When I made it out of the blackberries, I could see that he was crossing the bridge towards me more rapidly. I get to my car, flung the door open just as he arrived. I locked the doors while he pounded on the hood of my car, just screaming and grunting non-verbally. The moment he went through my driver's side door, I hit the gas and took off as quick as I can. I looked back and he was chasing after me. He must have ran after my car for at least a mile until he faded from view. I was bleeding everywhere from running through the blackberries. I was unclothed, shaken and crying. 
Had I have hesitated for 10 seconds longer, I don't think I would have got out of there alive. Even typing out this story all these years later is actually making me shake. I will never ever go back to that area and since that moment I always bring a hiking buddy with me to be safe. Now I was in Yellowstone riding a bicycle fast down a grey curve. Cars are stopped. I look up ahead and there's a grizzly. I could have easily hit into the cars or the grizzly bear itself. I'm just glad that I made it out of there okay. Now once I was driving into Yosemite at 4am and saw something in the road as I come around a corner, I slam on my brakes and it turned out to be a wolf. Several years later, I mentioned this to someone offhand and they said Yosemite didn't have any wolves. I looked it up and they have exactly one wolf in the park. I realised that I nearly prowled into this one single wolf and I'm very glad that I managed not to. Once while in a national park, I was chilling in a hammock and my family started yelling at me to run away. Turns out, there was a bear right near me. I slowly walk away and the bear actually went inside my hammock to start eating different things there. Uh, 